my best friend and I are, I call her my best friend and I never text or call her. I feel super horrible. I'm really, really sorry. Like, I love you to death. I just, I'm just a really bad person when it comes to talking to people. Like, Hey guys. So the holidays are over finally. Thank God. I sound like a like an old lady when I say that because I haven't really celebrated well, I feel like I haven't really celebrated Christmas over the years because it's just like too overwhelming and um too monetized for my liking. But I, we still exchange gifts. We still do gifts. And uh, we still haven't done our gift exchange. It was supposed to, it's supposed to be sometime. It's supposed to be next weekend, I think. But I have some really fantastic news. So I will have a brand new area to stream and do the things that I like to do. So I'm really looking forward to that. What happened was that several months ago... Um, our son, uh, needed a place to stay for a bit. And so it, we moved our daughter out of her room right before that. Cause we we're going to move her into the other room and which is our living room. And then we we're going to move the living room or the entertainment room into her room. So that didn't end up happening because we needed the extra room to let him stay in. He actually works in the city, so it's about an hour away from here. So that's two hours of driving every day. And when you work like really long hours, that's really a long time to be away from your bed and your home and the work where you're comfortable. So he moved in with his mom in the city, which is great because at least he doesn't have far to go and he'll be able to sleep in and more enjoy himself. So I'm really happy for him that he's got a place to go and that he's, you know, I mean, like, it's not like he was going to be out on the street. It's just a lot easier for him than to drive an hour every day and then an hour, like an hour every morning and then an hour every night. It's exhausting. It's tiring. It's hard on the body. I remember doing it and feeling so overwhelmed in the winter because of all of the car accidents and the cars in the ditch and the ice, ice patches. I mean, I'm sure he'll tell you he's not overwhelmed by driving in it, but it's still takes a toll on your body as well so because stress does take a toll on our body so I'm gonna have a new room to stream in I am really excited about the fact that I'll be able to start streaming now right now because the office space is in the bedroom and I'm usually awake at night because I've gone back to old habits of being up a lot later and going to bed a lot later and then getting up later in the day I just prefer it because then I'm not alone at home and it gives me more time with my daughter and my husband. So once we get that all sorted out, it'll be, it'll be great because I need a place to go so I can work on my projects and my husband's not snoring. <laughs> That's insane. Like he snores really, really loud. So sometimes, like I usually don't hear him because I have like my noise canceling headset on. But it, he can be pretty loud at times. And I'm sure I am too when I snore. So, because I do snore and I know I snore. The the other thing that's really on my mind that I've been meaning to get off our ch my chest is we have this cat. Not in the house. It's a cat that's outside. He's been coming around for a while several months now he would sit at our door like at our back at our patio door and he would sit there and play with our cats on the inside of the house and so we really wanted to adopt him and bring him inside and get him all cleaned up and fixed and fixed and everything like we want to get him neutered and bring him inside and so he could be with you know his other cat family and we hit up two uh, cat rescues in the area and they were both full and they said they can't keep up and they gave us a list of names of places that we could call. So I have to start doing that today. Um, it's insane. I'm pretty sure we're not going to find uh, 
you know, an adoption place for him at the moment because we want to go th through that avenue because we don't have like a whole bunch of money. So what we want is they take care of everything. They take care of getting him all his shots. They take care of making sure he's completely clean and he's got a good bill of health. And, <coughs> and once like that's done, we want him inside, but I mean, that takes a lot and somebody has to house him in the meantime so he can stay safe. He's a big, tough boy. He's medium to long haired cat. He's a beautiful, um, uh, like Persian looking kind of cat and I don't know what he's doing outside he's so gorgeous and he just comes up and now he lets us pet him we feed him now we like he's part of the feeding process at home so we feed him and he toughed it out through the last snowstorm we just had like that big massive snowstorm that was like coast to coast across Canada and the United States um he survived it and like I thought he had personally passed I was so scared that he had passed away because it was so cold um, and it was really windy. At one point he spent the time in the bin that we made him, but it's not warm enough for him. So we really want him indoors. Hopefully we can get him to a shelter ASAP so we can, we can, you know, make the arrangements to bring him home. And that would be really nice. I'll try to find a photo. I've taken photos of him and I'll, I'll try to put it here somewhere or here or here or here or here, whatever. So yeah, and we called him Bear because he's just a big, big fluff ball, you know, so... And the last thing I'm looking forward to, it is the new year. I don't do resolutions. I just do working on myself. Uh, resolutions are not a thing for me. It doesn't work. I have to just take one day at a time. And once I get to wherever I want to be, I just put another goal in. Um, so we're looking, my, my best friend and I are, I call her my best friend and I never text her or call her. I feel super horrible. I'm really, really sorry. Like, I love you to death. I just... I'm just a really bad person when it comes to talking to people. Like, when we're together, her and I, like, we talk for hours. And if we're stoned, it's like, we're even more talking. Like, we talk politics and psychology and philosophy. And it's so nice to have a friend like that. Um, and I miss that. And I know she's busy. So I, I try not to bother people like they have their own lives. It's hard enough as it is. So... I just want to be here for people when they need me because I'm doing okay. Like I'm seriously doing okay. So I'm, she's such an, she's such an awesome friend. Like she puts up with my crazy, crazy, crazy life. And I think it's important that we get away so we can just have some girl time and talk and just be ourselves, be, just be happy and take it easy. So I have to talk to my husband. I keep forgetting to talk to him about it because of course uh, I I mean, like, I have to pay for the, um, I'm getting nervous because I can't remember the words and my voice is going to crack and I hate that. For the accommodations. Sorry. So, yeah, like, I really want to go, but I have to get there and driving is not. I don't feel comfortable driving. Um, one, the stress. Two, the stress could bring on a seizure, I'm sure. And I don't want to take that chance. And I don't want to kill somebody. So I prefer not driving. And yeah, so... So I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully we can do that soon. And I can do a couple of videos. Talk about where we are, what we're doing, what we're up to. Um, so yeah. That's, that's pretty much what I'm looking forward to. In the new year. And I'm hoping that I get in, get these things done. I've been really tired. So that also doesn't help the speech. But one last thing. I forgot to mention. Um, I think I talked about going through the light clinic for medical cannabis. And so I had been taking CBD for like a good, for, for like a couple of weeks. And I wasn't really focused on what it was doing for me. And the only way to get a real feel for it is to take it for like at least 30 days. So I was taking 25 milligrams of CBD and um, for, for like two weeks. And already I've seen a difference. Although they tell you 30 days. Like I, I see a difference just 
in my hair. I know it's stupid. In my hair, in my nails, um, but in my body, in my brain, it's so weird. It's like, there's no more brain fog. There's no more brain fog. And when I smoke my cannabis and I take my CBD, like I feel so much more in tuned. Like I have a little bit of a high where I feel like I'm floating and I'm happy and I'm giddy and I'm in a good mood. And then it kind of tapers down and it becomes like all depending on what the strain that I got does. So um, the strain that I have is Blue Dream. It's such an amazing strain. Um, I was reading up on ALS and cannabis therapy in ALS patients. I don't have ALS. I don't have ALS. I don't know what I have. So I'm just looking at things so it can help me because I do have something wrong with my brain, but it might not be ALS. It could be MD. It could be MS. It could be anything. So I found that the blue dream was the best. My thoughts were clear. I could focus. The other night I wrote like three pages of a script. So I'm on video number two script. It's just crazy. <laughs> It's like, I love this. So so we bought more CBD because now I ran out and uh, although it hasn't kicked off yet, like I still feel pretty good. <clears throat> um, this one is a CBN and a CBD together. So that should really help me with my focus, with my, you know, with managing my, my stress, my anxiety. And the other day was probably the worst of, was the worst day so far of my PTSD this year. I had full-on flashbacks about something and we were sitting in the car and I couldn't talk. And my husband, once I told him about it, he was like, why didn't you tell me? And I was like, I couldn't. I couldn't talk. I was afraid. I sounded, I, you know, like I didn't want you to think that I was lying or that you wouldn't believe me. And I don't want to talk about it after it's happened because, because I'm embarrassed of the fact that I can't deal with it. It's really hard sometimes when it comes up. It's extremely um, invasive. Yeah, invasive. It's very, like, it's... I know it sounds really, really stupid, but you know in the movies where they do the scene and they just keep going... Like, they do, like, shots and they show, like, really quickly what's happening to someone in a really bad situation? Like, that's what I experienced. Like, flashes of images of what happened to me. Um, and they don't come all at once. So this is, like, a new flashback. And I knew there was something there, like, that was kind of rummaging around. I think my body was like, you're going through so much, I'm not going to let anything else go or else I'm going to die kind of deal. But... <laughs> It's trauma. It's it's like trauma all over again. And the fact that I don't remember all the parts of what happened to me, because um, because I was probably drugged. Like I believe I was drugged. Um, that's just pictures, like random things, and I remember them. Like they make me feel sick to my stomach that they're there in my head. So I try not to think about it, but I do know how to manage them now. Like I was really quiet in the, in the, in the Jeep. Uh, the one thing that I do that's really, really weird, but I do this a lot is that I, I like rub my fingers together and usually they're really soft, but today they're really clammy and it just makes me feel better. It just makes me feel better or I play with my hair because I'm, I'm like processing the information and trying to keep it calm without screaming or yelling or being afraid or crying. So so, like, I try, I guess I'm, uh, not disassociating, but, like, I try to look at it as it's in the past. This is not happening right now. It's scary. And I'm going to get through it. And that's what I try to keep repeating myself as I go through that motion of those images, images flickering in my head. So, I try not, I try to take life one moment at a time. Because I can't handle stress anymore. Like, my body just seizes up and, and can't handle, like, it starts vibrating super, super loud. Like, I can feel it right here. And it goes, like, all the way up. And it just feels like an intense vibrating. Like, you you ding a xylophone or something. And then it's just vibrating. And it it's, it's annoying. 
because you want it to stop. You want the images to stop. You want the feelings to stop. You want the shame to end. It, it's, it's just scary, you know, and I know I'm not the only one going through this. I know that there's other people out there that are going through this, that are dealing with trauma just as much as I am. Um, and a lot of things can be considered trauma. Like even what I learned was losing a loved one can be considered trauma. Because like, if you look at my daughter who went through losing her grandmother or my son who was, who lost his grandmother, like they were extremely close to her. They were like, and for my, my son, she was his second mom. You know, she was always there. She always took care of him. She was like, she always took care of him when I was working. So they were very, very, very close. And losing her was like a piece of him that he lost. Like if he had lost me, his mom. And the same thing with my daughter, you know, and the doctor explained like, that's, that's very, like, there's a lot that we had been through. Like there was COVID. And to be honest, like the last 10 years of our lives have been just, you know, turned upside down there's just so much that has happened and even the psychiatrist who met with us for my daughter said that's a lot that's a lot for a little girl even though she's like 14 now it's a lot for her to go through in one period of time so she lost her her grandfather my husband's dad passed away she was quite young and she did really well with that and she understood and like we had a psw for her and she did really really well and then she, sorry, I went into another thought and I totally lost it. <laughs> uh, and then, like, we lost my uncle. COVID started. My mom got sick. We lost our dog. We lost our cat. Like, we put down our dog. Our cat died. And then my mom passed away. And it was just like... And then now she's being bullied at school. I don't know how she's going to make it. I don't know. She's a tough cookie. You know, and she's got, like, good brothers, a good family, and we love her. And I hope that she'll be okay. And she's so beautiful. She's so gorgeous. She's such a good kid. She's just going through a hard time. And I'm going to hold her up as much as I can because she's such an amazing daughter. All right. I am I feel better now. See, I don't need a psychologist. I have you guys. So don't forget to leave a like if you like my video. Don't forget to subscribe. It does help the uh, push my video into the algorithm and get other people to hear me out. I really want to reach people as much as possible and help them. Um, so yeah, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification if you want to get all the new video updates. All right. Love you guys. Bye.